Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So a couple of weeks back, I showed you how to fuse filament together using just a piece of tubing. I went through the process, kind of talked about why you'd want to do it, um, how to do it and such. Uh, today, I wanted to go ahead and show you the process if you actually bought a tool that's meant for filament welding, like this one here from Big Tree Tech. There are a couple other off-brand ones as well, but the price is pretty much the same across the board. I think you're talking ballpark of I don't know, 10 or 12 bucks is what it was. But basically a lot of the process here is the same, uh, but I wanted to show you as an example to give you options. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and talk about why you wanna fuse filament together again really quick. I covered that in the other video, uh, but just in case uh, somebody wasn't watching both, I will make sure to cover it here again as well. And then I'll go through actually how to fuse the filament or weld the filament using this. Um, there is the way that they recommend, which is the way it's meant to be used, and then the way that I actually ended up using it. Uh, so I'll kind of talk about both of those. Uh, to me, it was easier to do it the way I'm gonna show you, uh, but I will mention the way to do it both ways. If you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so first let's talk about why you want to fuse filament together. Uh, really, there's two reasons. One, if you have a spool that's almost empty or a couple of them and you're wanting to use the rest of that filament, uh, you can just fuse those together and get one usable spool. Uh, typically, you can get five or six slices in a spool and depending on how much you have left on it, um, maybe more. Um, but that's a common reason that people tend to do it. Uh, the second is, let's say you're in the middle of a longer print and you misjudge how much filament you have. Um, you can go ahead and slice it when you get towards the end and then uh, fuse, let's just say here, uh, fuse this into uh, a new roll and then just keep going with it. Uh, that will allow you to save some prints. Uh, bear in mind that it might not be the best quality. Uh, overall, I have had pretty good luck with it. Uh, here's an example of one that I did. Um, really no issues uh, transitioning from the two colors, uh, but I did have to sand the fuse down pretty uh, good just to be able to get through the Bowden tube. If you have a direct drive system uh, like I have on this printer over here, uh, it is more forgiving, uh, but with the Bowden tube system where you're actually feeding it through, uh, it's not very forgiving at all. So you wanna make sure that when you go into the process that the filament moves freely uh, within here which we'll talk about that here in a couple minutes as well. Um, really, those are the two reasons why you'd want to fuse filament together. It's A, to save filament if you've got a bunch of spools, or B, to save a print. Um, I did want to make a note that if you're printing uh, like minis or things like that where you're trying to get the most detail out of the print, uh, I wouldn't try to use a slice spool. Uh, it's just you're asking for problems because it's not going to be the highest quality filament. I would stick to something that's new or make sure that it's at least good. Um, to me, uh, this is something that where I'll do where if I'm trying to print something large, maybe not the highest quality, uh, but just decent quality, uh, it tends to work just fine. Like I said here, uh, no issues. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the process. All right, guys, so here's Big Tree Tech's uh, filament welding tool. Uh, it's similar to some of the other ones on the market. Overall, it does work pretty good, but it does take a lot of practice. I saved a lot of these to kind of show you that um, it, there's a lot of trial and error. It's similar to uh, the process I covered a couple weeks back where we were just using the tube to fuse like this one here. Um, and actually, I'm using a lot of the same practices and I, most of the time I'm not doing what they recommend, which I'll cover here in a couple minutes. Uh, but overall, if you have this, it does make the process a little bit easier and it does allow you to remove this if you're trying to uh, actually use it while it's on the printer or if you have a large spool or something you're trying to just keep them separate still, uh, you can just unscrew each side and just pop it off so that you can actually take it off and continue to use the filament. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how to use this. So you are gonna need some tools, uh, basically just a heat source. Um, I was using my little heat gun here. It does work, uh, but I found uh, when using this, it's easier to use a lighter. I like these ones like this that have the adjustable flame. Um, it just makes it easier so I can hold it whichever way is comfortable and still get the flame where I need it to go. Uh, it lights the filament up a lot quicker and it does make the bonding a little bit easier. All right, so what we need to do here is go ahead and run the filament through one side. So I'm gonna use the black filament on one side here and uh, just this blue filament over here on the other side just so we can see it. Um, 
So based on the instructions, yeah, so you feed the you feed the filament into both sides until they meet in the middle here. And then they recommend that you heat the filament up from the bottom here in the middle so they fuse together and then pull the actual filament through one side or the other. The issue I have with this almost every time is the filament isn't straight when it's coming through. So it's going to end up sliding off the bottom or just getting stuck and uh, kind of clogging up in the middle and it doesn't actually go through. Uh, I don't know if that's just an issue with how I'm doing it or if there's just a process or something, a technique to figure out there. Uh, but that is an itch issue I constantly have. Uh, so what I like to do here is just feed it through one side, similar to what we'd be doing if we were using a piece of the tubing. Heat this one up and then kind of uh, push this one in here and push it in and then kind of let it sit there for a second and then pull it through. Uh, that gives you a decent weld, probably not as strong as if you did it in the center because in the center here, you'll be heating up both sides so it'll fuse a little bit better uh, versus just heating up the one. Uh, but this does work just fine. I mean, I've done it uh, probably a half a dozen times so far for test prints and I haven't had any issues. Uh, no matter which way you end up doing it, you are going to have to sand it down a little bit, especially if you're using a Bowden tube system. Uh, with direct drive, it is a little bit more forgiving, uh, but if you're using any type of Bowden tube system like on the Ender 3, you are going to have to sand it down a bit. All right, so here, let me show you the process. I'm just going to get this one ready. So what I like to do is have this out by about a centimeter or so, and then heat it up for four or five seconds until it's basically liquid. And then just take the other piece here, kind of push it in and push it through just like that. And then in, in here, uh, push it together and then kind of move it back and forth a little bit in here to uh, just uh, get the shape a little bit better. It makes it easier to work with. And then you can go ahead and uh, push this all the way through. And that one, I need to redo. It didn't turn out that well. As you can see, it's kind of separating. So I'm gonna do that again really quick. Uh, but that's basically the process. You do that a couple times until you get a good seal on it. All right, after a couple attempts there, I got it. It's fused here pretty good. Now you'll want to kind of go through, take a look at it, see where it's thicker than uh, where it should be. Uh, you can also use this as a kind of a helper if you can't slide it in and out okay uh, then you're going to have to uh, sand it down or trim it up a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, typically i just use a piece of sandpaper and then sometimes i have a little sanding block here i use as well uh, but you can just kind of uh, sand down the loose edges or just cut them your choice all right now once you got to the point where it can slide in and out of here without an issue uh, you can go ahead and just um, Take one of these off so you can pop the filament out. And, all right, and then from there, you can go ahead and put it on the filament roll if you're just making a sliced filament roll, or you can uh, go ahead and resume the print if you're attaching it to the printer. All right, so I'm gonna do that really quick. All right, now that that's done, uh, there's a couple things I wanted to kind of point out here. Uh, when you're using this, the reason why I fed it through the way I did, which was come through this way instead of this side, is uh, this material seems to burn a little bit, especially if you're using a flame, and it kind of loosened up um, the opening here a bit, uh, so it made it a little bit wider when going in, which caused some issues. Whereas on the metal side, I didn't have that issue. And then when you're tightening this to get it ready to use, you wanna make sure that you're using a flat surface to keep things even. And you wanna to try to get these as close together and as tight as possible. Any extra gaps there will make the process a little bit harder. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, but overall, this thing works pretty similar to the tubing. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. Uh, and it's not awfully expensive, but it isn't basically free like a piece of tube. So it's your choice there. Uh, I do think this is worth having around, especially if you do a lot of 3D printing. Uh, going over to the sanding side really quick. Uh, make sure if you're fusing it from one side that you're paying attention to where the fuse is because if you start sanding, you're potentially going to um, cause a split. So if you look here, you can kind of see where it's fused a little bit more heavily on one side. Um, that's because we're 
only using, uh, we're really only heating up the one side coming out here. So it's not fusing them together as well as if you're able to get it to work in the center. Um, so that does make it a little bit hard to sand, but when you're sanding it, just make sure that you're trying to get as even as possible all the way around and you're not uh, cutting into it at all. Uh, I was using this uh, 110 grit, uh, I'm sorry, 120 grit sandpaper here uh, for larger removals. And then I have 220 here that I was using just for a little bit of edging. Um, and it's able to push into it because it's a sponge. Uh, so just a couple small tips there. Uh, overall, similar to uh, using the tubing, same principles really apply. It's really more of uh, you're combining filament to really save some filament for larger prints, that kind of stuff, or you're trying to save a print midway through because you're running out of filament. It's not something I would use if I'm trying to do any type of precision printing or anything like that. I mean, going back to this Benchy here, which I showed you earlier, it does work pretty well, um, but it is a pain. And then that goes back to the last thing is practice. If this is something you're going to want to do, I would highly recommend you practice at least uh, the first time uh, on just a bunch of scrap filament to make sure that uh, you get the process and everything down. It is a pain, I'm not going to lie, at least initially. Once you get the process down, uh, you'll get to a point where you can pretty much get it almost every time, but getting to that point uh, is a pain, especially if you're going to try to use this the way it was intended. So I like the concept here where you heat up both of them in the middle, push them together and pull it through. Uh, in theory, it makes sense in practice. Uh, when your filament is angled different ways and it's not coming through here completely straight, it is a pain. Now, if you wanted to set this up on a vise or something like that and have the filament coming through completely straight, if you have that option, it might make it easier. Um, I was showing you the way I did because most time I'm doing it, I'm just throwing filament together and or I'm cutting filament to slice it off of the printer like this piece over here that I have and just trying to work with what I have. I'm not really trying to make a perfectly sliced spool. Um, but if you are, you might be able to go that route. It's definitely worth practicing, especially because that's how this is meant to be used. Uh, I just found better luck using it similar to how I would use the tubing. And maybe that's just because I had more practice going the other way. All right, but if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks. All right guys, so that covers the process of using a filament welding tool to um, weld or fuse filament together. Uh, like I mentioned a couple times, it requires practice and patience. So the first couple times you go to do it, uh, just keep that in mind because you are going to mess up. And I know this tool is meant to be used with the fuse in the center, uh, but like I talked about earlier, it was easier for me to feed it all the way through and kind of use it like if it was a tube and then light it and then uh, put the filament through and um, go that route versus trying to fuse it in the middle, mainly because of the roundness or the, um, the way that the filament is being fed in. If you have something to keep it perfectly straight and you can feed the filament through each time without having any type of restriction or anything like that, uh, you'll be able to use the center. It's just with this setup here is kind of a mess. So if you're not doing something where you're dedicating a little bit of area or space to it, I think that's going to be pretty challenging, but you could probably do it. Uh, overall, I think both of these methods work. Um, I could do a video covering the two in more detail. I don't think it's necessarily worth it. I'll just link to the other one here and vice versa. Um, but both processes work. Uh, both will get you uh, usable filament. Um, I would say that it's probably a little bit easier to use the welding tool than the tube uh, just by a little bit. But that said, it's they both work. So if you don't want to spend the 12 bucks or whatever this was on this, just get a piece of tubing and it'll work just fine. Uh, I do recommend you having a piece or one of these tools just around by your printer in case you have to do that. Uh, I can't count how many times that I've lost prints just because I misjudged how much filament was going to be used and let it run overnight or something and ended up getting uh, pretty much just running out of filament. So I had to scrap that print and restart. Um, so in those cases, if you don't have a filament runout sensor, you can just slice it before you go to bed. That way you know you're good. Or you can attach a filament runout sensor. That way it'll pause when you run out. Then you can just go ahead and join in the morning and be good to go. 
All right, so if you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.